Hi, I'm Trent Mell. I'm President and CEO of First Cobalt. First Cobalt, we created the company back in March of 2017. Uh, we were, I guess, one of the early entrants into the, the Cobalt space for the electric vehicle revolution and uh, brought together a team of operators. All of us come from bigger companies. Myself started at Barrick Gold and I've worked my way through uh, nickel and, and palladium and various commodities. And then we started looking around the world, looking for assets. And, and so we started our life as a, as a mineral exploration company. Uh, and, and through that process, we landed on some great assets in Canada and the US and, and devised a strategy that was focused on trying to develop an alternate supply chain to cobalt, which today is based out of the DRC in China. And we've been successful at that. Uh, as, uh, as of last year, we refocused the company to get further downstream in the automotive supply chain and focus on refining. We've got a permitted refinery in Ontario and we are moving that forward in 2020 to get it to production. When we started looking at the first cobalt refinery and what we could do to bring it back into production, we're faced with the reality that there is no significant cobalt mining in North America today. It's coming, uh, including our own asset in Idaho, which is looking to be very prospective. But you know, we've got an asset, it's, it's ready to go, uh, it's in fabulous condition, uh, but the feedstock was the issue. And so when you look at the global supply chain today, um, about 70% of global mined cobalt is coming out of the DRC, and most of that then goes to China which then controls about 80% of the cobalt sulfate market, and that's the chemical form of cobalt that you put into uh, electric vehicle batteries. And so we thought, why not bring some of that material to Canada rather than ship it all to China? And that's what set us on, on the path as we uh, tested the product. It to, to proved to be very compatible with our facility. Uh, moreover, probably higher grade and probably easier to treat than what we have uh, received historically in the facility. And so that set us on a, on a fast track and a bit of a courting process, and we have, uh, as a result of scoping studies and metallurgical tests, we, we ran a bit of a marketing exercise and landed on a strategic relationship with Glencore. And, and the focus for us this year is to try to capitalize on that partnership and see first production on the continent of a battery-grade sulfate by hopefully November of, of 2020. I like to remind investors that we're not a mining company. You know, we're, we're, we're firmly part of the automotive supply chain. We're, we're at the chemicals forum. It's a widget factory producing a chemical that's then going to go into cell making that goes into batteries that then goes into the EVs. And the batteries are the most expensive component. And we've got some fabulous mineral assets in Ontario and in Idaho, but all of our focus has to be on getting ourselves to cash flow, getting ourselves to, to production of a critical mineral uh, that America and Canada desperately want to, to see uh, brought, uh, brought to the fore. And so the focus for us right now is to complete the feasibility study. Osenko uh, Engineering did a scoping study for us in 2019. Uh, looked very promising, uh, competitive on the operating costs, modest capex, 37 and a half million US dollars was their estimate. So we need to validate all of this work. And so by the end of Q1, we expect to see a, either a pre-fease or feasibility study on just a quick restart. It's at 12 tons a day. It's effectively a giant pilot plant. It's going to give us the comfort and the flow sheet, give us the operating experience, and give us, a, give us a product that we can then take to battery makers around the world to then develop long-term relationships. Uh, and then we'll also have a feasibility study on the expanded scenario. And so using the footprint of the refinery, there's the refinery building proper, a big warehouse next to it. By maximizing that footprint, uh, we, want to, uh, we wanted to see where we could get to. And 55 tons per day, uh, of production would seem to be the scenario. We got a feasibility study on that. Our projections is that at that throughput rate with the feed material that Glencore would like to provide us is that we could produce about 5,000 tons of cobalt or 5, 25,000 tons of cobalt sulfate product uh, per annum, which gives us uh, a pretty big market share. We become one of the more meaningful cobalt refineries in the world. And so what I expect in terms of, in terms of catalyst would be get the feasibility studies done aim to get a quick restart. We think we could be there in maybe six months time, which would get us towards the end of the year. And then within a year, look to do the expansion and the permit amendments to allow us to then, to then go to that expanded footprint. So a, a key uh, attribute of our ability to kind of move forward is, is the relationship with Glencore. They're, of course, a, a, a giant in the commodity space and they happen to be the world's biggest cobalt miner. So when you look at sort of how do we partner 
with a bigger player to get ourselves there, we landed in the right place. And, and we are geographically, we're actually situated right in between their Sudbury nickel operations and their Horn uh, uh, copper smelter in Quebec. Um, so they've been very, very supportive. And the arrangement we're looking at out of the gate is uh, under a framework agreement that we need to formalize would be they would provide the feed to us for a period of some four years. They would then also provide all the capital and as a result of that, we would then give them the, the right to, to, to the offtake rights on the, on the product as well. And so, you know, for our first four years, uh, they would advance 37 and a half, call it $40 million US. It would get us to production. It would limit any kind of equity dilution uh, on our shareholders. Uh, and, and that would allow us to pay down that debt over the four year term of the facility and then face the market thereafter as our own, with our own product and our own, uh, our own offtake. So um, I'm quite happy, the technical support, the financial support, uh, the commercial backing of uh, the biggest trader and miner of, of cobalt worldwide uh, sets us up for, uh, for real success, both in terms of execution and fast tracking our progress to production. I, I think the most exciting thing for us is how we've been able to differentiate first cobalt from all of our cobalt peers. Uh, we had a really bull run in 2017, early 18. Cobalt went to, to all-time highs and, and then came off. And, and probably a little bit of exuberance with the EV revolution. It's coming, it's still coming. Um, but that was followed by a pretty big sell-off. And a lot of the cobalt uh, players that were in the space, uh, frankly, are no longer active or no longer around. Uh, there is a handful of us, but we are the only uh, cobalt junior out there that has the potential of seeing production and cash flow this year. I think we, we stand to deliver some, some great value and our, again, our partnership with Glencore is, uh, is key to getting there. So we've got a great ally. And, and I'd also add that we're, we're responding to a, a real serious policy concern out of Washington. Uh, President Trump put cobalt on the list of critical minerals. And if you want to foster a domestic supply of cobalt, at least in the short term, the best way to do it is for us to get our hands on an existing supply that's already present in the DRC and divert it away from China and into America, America via Canada and under our, our free trade agreement. It's an integrated supply chain uh, from the automotive side and we become a, an important player. And I would dare say uh, with, with fair conviction here that we've got good support from uh, Ottawa and from Washington and what we're doing. So as we enter into 2020, uh, we, we're, we're coming off of, um, I guess, a cobalt malaise. We see the uptick in the, in the commodity price uh, we see a lot more uh, exuberance around EVs, particularly out of Europe, which had a very strong year last year. And so we're setting ourselves up for uh, yet another leg up on the EV, on the EV movement. Uh, first Cobalt is playing into that really nicely. Uh, we could be first production, first cash flow in November, December of this year. Uh, and, and as an investor myself in my own company and investors out there, I think we should be very excited for the, the path, the road that we've laid ahead and how this fits in some of the macro factors that are really starting to line up nice for, our, for ourselves and for the, uh, the global EV movement. If you want to learn more about First Cobalt, our website is firstcobalt.com and uh, by email it'd be info at firstcobalt.com. Uh, we take every shareholder inquiry seriously and would love to hear from you.